Now, that leads us into this conversation of isotopes. So Dalton told us that you know every individual atom is the same for an element. And we found out later on in time that that's not necessarily true because every individual element does have multiple versions of it we call isotopes. Okay, so for example, hydrogen, our most common form, has one proton in it and one electron. That's it. So it makes up hydrogen. However, if you add an, an, a neutron in there, we get what we call heavy hydrogen or deuterium. Okay, so that gives you one proton, one neutron. It's still hydrogen because remember the protons match the atomic number, and the atomic number for hydrogen is one. So anytime you have one proton, it has to be hydrogen. Okay, this just happens to be hydrogen with an extra neutron in it. Okay, if you have two neutrons, we call that tritium. Okay, this is the radioactive stuff. Okay, but it's still just hydrogen. And if you notice our shorthand notation, it's a one to one, a two to one, and a three to one. Okay, they have the same number of protons, identical atomic numbers but different mass numbers, okay? And that's why a mass number is, a, is something that we need to use is because when we talk about individual isotopes, we're talking about carbon-14 versus carbon-12, uranium-235 versus uranium-238, iodine-131 versus iodine-129, okay? We're talking about different isotopes or different forms of it. Some are radioactive, some are not, okay? And this is a way for us to actually keep track of it is by, by mass number, okay? Now, if we take a look at the periodic table, well, notice that on the periodic table, we always have this second number. And that second number is very useful for us because it takes those different isotopes that we have in nature and it combines them together and it gives us a weighted average, okay? Within carbon-12, if you notice, the average isn't 13. So it's not, you know, 12 plus 13 plus 14 divided by 3, then you're done. That's not how it works, okay? It's a weighted average because in nature, okay, we have almost all carbon-12. So the percent of carbon-12 in carbon is 98.9%. Okay? Um, carbon-13 makes up 0.10% and carbon-14 is less than 0.00000001%. Okay? So if you look, there's not a lot of carbon-14 or carbon-13. So if you do this average, it makes sense that if you average out with those percentages that you're going to end up getting a mass that is closer to 12. Okay? So what we need to do here is what we call is a weighted average, okay, if you're working with atomic mass. And we're going to work through that now, okay? So to do a weighted average, you need to know the different isotopes you have. So let's say do the example of chlorine, okay? And I'm actually going to go to the board here. So um, we have chlorine, and chlorine has two different isotopes. So it's a pretty easy one because there's only two of them. We have chlorine... 35, and we have chlorine, 37. It's two isotopes, okay? Now, obviously, if they were equally weighted, the mass or ato the atomic mass of chlorine should be 36. It's not. If you look up the atomic mass for chlorine, it's about 35.45 AMUs. Atomic mass units, okay? So 35.45. So it can't be equal amounts of each one of these things, okay? One of them has to be weighted heavier. So if you look at the two, if this is average comes out to be closer to 35, we know that this one must be more abundant, this one is less abundant, okay? And if we want to verify this, we need to know those percentages. So I know that chlorine 35 is about 25%. I know that chlorine 37 is, oops, that's not 25, it should be about 75%, sorry. And chlorine 37 is about 25%, okay? So if we want to figure out what is the atomic mass here between the two things, if we take the mass number times your percent for each one of those, and then add those two numbers up. Okay, that will give you your weighted average. So if we take our 35 times 75 percent, 35 times 0.75, I get 26.25. Okay, 
And so this is the percent. I actually took it times 0.75. This is in atomic mass units. If I take 37 times 25% or 0.25, I get 9.25 AMUs. Add the two things up, okay? I get a zero, I get a five, um, five, and a three, okay? So I end up with 35.50. Okay. Now, it's not exactly 25%, it's not exactly 75%, but we see the math. You take your mass number of each isotope times its percent, and then, and then do as many of those as you have, and then add them all up. Okay. This is no different than if, if your teacher does weighted averages in your grades. It's no different. You do the exact same thing. Okay? It's just a way of doing weighted averages versus doing your, um, just your standard average, which doesn't weight one thing over the other. Okay? Now, uh, we will have activities about this in class, and there is actually a practice sheet posted online about calculating weighted averages that you can also take a look into. Okay? Uh, if you want to, you can try this one uh, at your desk. So carbon-12 is 98.90%, carbon-13 is 1.10%, and carbon-14 is 0.000001%. Okay? Using these percents and those numbers, do the math and see, do you come out with 12.011? Okay? Can you, does this math, if you try it, does it match that number? It should, okay, if you do it right. So go ahead and work it out. Take the 12 times the 98.9. Take the 13 times the 1.10, take the 14 times 0 .0000001, uh, that will come out to basically zero. And then add them up, and hopefully you'll get the 12.011, okay? We are going to stop here with this video, and we'll tackle planetary model and that kind of stuff next time. Thank you.